very untouchable because they've got money see you guys money talks I'll be the first to tell you that I know money talks not because I have it but because my stalker has it I've tried and tried and tried to bring certain things to the authorities attention and they just don't they ignore me they act like they're they act like they're listening but they don't they only listen enough to know to to until the name comes up that I'm going to be dropping to them and then they just and then oh yeah okay we've 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 got enough from you now we've got enough information yeah so <coughs> i know how this system works and i know and i know no no judges law enforcement people who are people who are in get this who are there to protect children against people that harm them in many ways you guys know what i'm talking about i'm talking the whole line of these people all these officials all these higher ups that are supposed to be protecting you and your children and your and everybody that's what their job is and to be fair and just and to put the criminals away and not just slapping their wrists and letting them go i know this for a fact because i have been there i've seen it it has happened to me over and over again i have seen it with my own eyes it has damaged me in so many ways um and i didn't think this video was going to go down this road so i may have to even make another video of the quest which i probably will do right after this one because I can't make them too long. They're not uploading in a... I don't know what's going on. But they're not... They're, it's having, they're, it's been having issues ever since I started poaching. 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 <laughs> uh, ever since I started posting the... Um, well, the ones about Copaca, actually. That's when it started. And then it got really bad when I started doing the Sigma Chi. So, what does that tell you? And you do know that my um, which ones were taken down. So my my so you got the Ashland Couch one up right now. So the Joshua Couch one was taken down. Like literally, like gone. Like you can't. I can't even go in and d view it. I can't do nothing. And the other one is the Copaca one with a certain person's name in there. You know who was in that red car? Yeah, that one. So, I'm a little more careful with how I put things out, like in videos. Like, if I'm being um, elusive, there's a reason for it. Like, if I'm just pop popping a photo in there, pause it and find it. Because it means something. Everything I put in my videos means something. And as I've been going through my phone and getting, that's why I'm like, you know, popping up videos right and left right now. It's because I need to get some room on my phone. But every time I go in there, I find something I forgot I had. Or I don't remember even having. Like what I just recently found. It's a car. Whew. And I'm just blown away by this one. So I've already, that one's already ready to be put up on it's on YouTube, but it's not to public yet because I need to actually make another video off of that to where I can talk into it and it sounds better. If I just talk into the phone when I'm recording, it doesn't sound as good. So I'll upload them to YouTube and then I'll record them from there and then pause them in the parts that I want to talk where you can, where it sounds so much better that way. So this is a lengthy process, you guys. I don't know. <laughs> it's, so fu it's funny sometimes when someone comes up in the comments and they're saying like, well, I can't, you know, this or I can't that or, you know, do you realize what you're doing here? And do you realize what you're doing there? And sometimes, no, I don't. So thanks for bringing that to my attention. But other times I just want to say, have you ever made a freaking video and put it on YouTube? 
I mean literally, for other people to watch. Not just for your family or your friends, but for other people to watch. It's not... It's gotten easier, put it that way. But it's still, there's still things that I'm just like, oh my god, how do I do this? How do I do that? And 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 when you're making it, like when you go into CapCut and you're put, trying to make the video, and then you forget, oh my god, I need to do this picture, I need that little insert, or I need this or that. Well, CapCut doesn't wait for you. You just you have to bust, you know, you have to leave CapCut, yet you CapCut, you have to go find it. You have to put it in an album where you can find it, you know, faster when it's in there. And then you and then and then even though you think you've cropped it the right way, no. When it comes up on CapCut and the thing, you got to go in, you got to transform it, then transform it, you got to go to crop. And I mean, it's like it's a whole process, a long process on some of them. And these Sigma ones have been really long, but they've been fun. I mean. You know, because I, because you know, I alter the pictures too. I put colors into them. Like if you guys saw the pictures when I first got them, the pictures that are on here, like, whew, one person said that the, even the intro scared them. Well, if you would have seen the pictures from the get go, you had been really scared, because I at least try to make them not so scary. I don't want to scare. I mean, I want people to be aware, and I want certain things to them to be aware that they are scary and that, that they're that they and they're meant to scare people you guys you think this questing wasn't meant to scare them intimidate them and you know bring them to their knees oh it certainly it certainly is for that i mean what do they say they break them down to build them up so is this some kind of mind control really you know, in a way it really is, right? It's a mind control. They break you down, take away who you are, your identity, what you ha what you know to be right. And then they revise you. They build you up, or they break you down to build you up. So they break down your entire, and this is what I'm seeing, your individuality, you as who you are, that in the now, they break that all down to where you're just a pile of mush, cowering in a corner, and then they build you up to who they want you to be. And at this point, you may already be a killer. Or have witnessed it, been part of it. And I bet you that with this particular type of mind control that some of these people don't even know, probably don't remember, probably put it in the back of their brains. And trust me, I know about this one too. Because I've had to put my own brain on lockdown in order to function at times. I've had to force myself to get out of the house after this at that after that happened to me i shut down for a good i'm going to say about 2 years and as i when i slowly started coming out of it i was just nothing like i nothing like people knew me to be i mean i was the person that everybody wanted at their parties like i just i i was I'm fun i was fun 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 i mean and liked by everyone Never ever had anybody say they never liked me, um, or you know, like going to talk to them. You know, people steer away from me. Well, at that point, when I was going through what I was going through with this person doing the stalking, I probably sounded like I was crazy, and because I felt like I was crazy, because I was being followed, and eventually, this is the weirdest. This is even the weirder part. This person was doing things in my phone. They were using my phone to do nefarious business. So eventually what happened, and he still didn't get in trouble for it, is they, this is where it got really crazy, because not only were was this person the stalker guy in my phone, but so were the police and like this state patrol, like I don't even know how high up it was, but they were in my phone too. 
and and I know this because when I pull out of my driveway, when I finally chose to go somewhere, there would be a, a cop car parked up the road, and then there would be one that, that would pull out after I pulled out of the driveway, and then just not too far, like literally car lengths up the road, there would be another one that pulled out in front of me. So I would be front and back of me, there would be police. This happened for quite some time. This happened for a long time. Till the point where I was talking into my phone as before I'd leave. I'd be like, okay, here I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be pulling out any minute. Why don't you come and get me? Blah, blah, blah. Because I didn't know what was going on. Now I realized that they were realized who was in my phone and they were trying to figure stuff out because they probably thought I was that person doing this nefarious business. But it wasn't me. It was like I couldn't even, I couldn't even pay my phone bill. I couldn't, I mean, it was so out, oh my God, you guys, it was so high because even when I turned my phone off at night, I'd wake up and I had all that data that had been used and my phone would be hot, it would be like, I was, my batteries would be, I mean, my batteries would go bad so fast. My phones would, I, like I said, I had to go keep turning in phones and they just kept giving me new phones. I never, they never even asked me questions about it. So I don't know if how long the cops were actually in my phone trying to find this person and what they were doing, trying to find what, or if it was me or whatever. But, but for them to give me like a new phone just like that, I mean, no questions asked, none. And they, and I didn't have to go in. They would just send, sh they would, sh they would ship it to me um, overnight, like in a day. I mean, I'd tell them one day and, and, and this, and, and with one of the, there was a uh, time frame right th in there that, that I think I went through, oh my gosh, it must have been three or four phones in a matter of probably a year, maybe a little bit less. To the point, I was just like, why is this happening? I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people who, I can't wear a watch because the time, like, the, I don't know if it's the energy in me, I don't know what it is, but it always, the time gets all weird, it whacked out on it, it never works. So I, I kind of was attributing it to that, you know? And until, until, I mean, I, I could tell you guys stories that would just blow your mind. So when this case came up, before I even knew about the stalking part of it, it was in an area where I grew up, right? Sorry, I just, my jacket's a little cold in here. Um, and so that was intriguing to me and then as i just started listening to this case i was just like oh my god <sighs> and hearing about her stalker really sent me spiraling there for a little while uh until i gained my footage my ground and jumped in jumped foot first feet first head first all of my body first in to this case So part of my research background <laughs> is nothing, is just me researching my stalker. And even then, when I would, I mean, I don't have any background in this kind of thing, but even then when I was doing it, that I would somehow, things would pop up that was like, what? Why did this, why did this pop up? And here's one of them I'm going to tell you guys. Now, this is something, I don't know if it's to be true, but now I'm thinking I should have listened to it. So when I had literally in my possession a box filled with um, it, evidence, evidence of what this person was doing, given to me by another person who this was also happening to, uh, thinking maybe I shouldn't go down that road yet. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to do it. Um, when I turned that evidence in, which took me everything I had in my body to do that, in fact, I was scared out of my mind because I did not know who to trust because at this point, I'm trying to get to people that I knew on the police force. And one of them, I used to run a karaoke in this one place, right? 
and one of them was one of the cops who now was really high up in the in the in the um system used to come in so all the time so i knew him very well and i really liked him and he's also a country singer <laughs> yeah yep country singer has his own album and everything and i called him i brought the information to him and when i talked to him on the phone he said he told me the steps to take and if that's what i did but when I took these steps, it didn't feel right. Something was very wrong in what was happening. And uh, it scared the, 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 oh, it scared me really bad. It scared me so bad. I was, I, pro I mean, I almost, I had a literally a mental breakdown that night. I was so scared. I was shaken. I mean, it took me, I don't even know if I slept that night. I don't know if I slept for three days. I mean, that's how bad it was getting to the point where I was so paranoid at what was going on around me that I couldn't even sleep and when I did finally sleep I would be out for I mean you couldn't I'm not a I'm not a heavy sleeper and you, you couldn't wake me up um because I've been awake for so long and it was just watching my back like I was so paranoid and I had good reason to be paranoid. Very good reason. I didn't realize I had that good of a reason at that time. It felt like I did, but I didn't know it. I didn't know it till much further down the road. Um, eventually, I got this, my whatever up, to get into, to bring a duffel bag, mind you, full of evidence. Literally evidence that if I go into what it was, you'd be like, holy crap. So I got into the cop shop, didn't know, at this point I'd been up for a couple days, didn't even know how to talk to them. I was just stumbling over my words. Finally, they, they had me wait, I, I gave them the name of the person, you know, the person that I knew, and they looked at me like, what? Because this guy's pretty high up. And so they made me wait forever. Oh my God, it, sound, it felt like it was two hours. Finally, somebody, finally I said, well, somebody, because they, they grabbed the duffel bag of stuff and they put it behind the counter, over the counter, right? And they're asking me, is there weapons? And I'm like, no. I mean, like, the, like I was the criminal. Like, I was the criminal, right? So, eventually, after it's what felt like two hours, I finally, you know, said behind the counter, because I could hear someone talking on the phone, yeah, she's over by here, she did da did you tell her, you know, you could hear things like that. And I felt, I mean, I just felt like I was being watched, like I was, like it was just, it was scary. And um, so finally, I just said, you know, I've got things I need to do. Is is someone going to come out and talk to me? And the, and then the one guy comes back and he says, oh, no, um, I'm sorry, but they're not here at, at the moment, right? I'm like, okay, well, then I'm I'm gone then. You guys can just keep that, whatever, do what you, you know. I brought this in for you guys to do something about. So I left, got in my, just got in my car, was about ready to start it up, and my phone rang. And it was a cop shop. And they're like, oh, so-and-so detective's here now. Would you mind coming back in? Well, I went to open my car, and he was standing right outside my car. Scared the crap out of me. Went back in. He was from the Child Protection Services. Which I felt good about because there were things in it that needed to be brought to someone's attention. And he asked me, he started in, asked me a few questions. And I know I was all over the place. Like, you know, kind of like my videos. They're all over the place. They're all, I'll do one thing, I'll do another thing. People have said that to me. Well, I don't care. That's how I get things across. That's how I do it. What's in my brain, I get out of my brain. I have to. After what I've been through, I got to. I can't stay in there because it just makes me crazy. So, I am sitting there. He starts. He's talking to me for a little while, and then he says, "Do you mind? Do you mind? Do you mind if I record this?" He says, "Because I'm going to ask you. I'll never forget this. Because I'm going to ask you a million questions, a million and one questions, and then I'm going to ask you a million and one those million and one questions over again." And I said, "Go for it. I'd be happy if you recorded it." So he pulled out a, one of those little recorders, and he put, put stuck it on play, and he started talking to me. And asking me certain questions, and I was answering him and everything. And 
about 10 minutes later, must have been something I said. He says, okay, that's good. We've got enough. I'll get this to whoever it needs to get to, and we'll look into this and blah, blah, blah. And he ushered me out of there so fast. Like, he couldn't get me out the door fast enough. And I was, like, as he is pushing me, literally pushing me out, I turned around and looked at him. He was a very, really tall guy. He gave me his card with my case number on the back and basically just pushed me out. I get in the car, and I'm just sitting there, just sitting there, just like, what the hell just happened? What just happened? All that, all that evidence now is there, and I can't do nothing about it. And I bet, you, and I, I was freaking. I'm thinking, oh my god, what is going to happen? Well, what happened was that cop brought all that evidence back to my stalker and told him what I did. Now chew on that for a little while and remind me because I will forget because I just remembered a little bit of it just a minute ago and I had to literally stop the phone in order to remember what I was talking about because it's so weird. Remember IRS. Just remember IRS. Keep bringing it up to me. Keep putting in their stalker IRS and I will remember what it is. Otherwise I won't. But I need to cut this short. It's at 49 minutes now. <laughs> Dang. Thank you for letting me talk and get this off my chest. Oh, you guys don't even know how good this feels. But there, it's, it's a little of what I know in this, these situations. And that's why if I do more on Kaylee than any other ones, it's because I know in my own way what she was going through. And I feel I just oh my god I know her trying to keep her her face on like when she was at the grub truck trying to act like nothing was actually happening and protect Maddie but all the while you saw her on her phone you saw how manic she was acting. But trying to be calm. Well, that was me. That's been me. So I get it. That's why when I first saw that grub truck, the first part of it, and then when the, the um, a full one came out, and it only came out for a little while, and, and, uh, and then it disappeared, and I was like, oh, no, because I, you know, I couldn't even get, I didn't even know about screen recording then. I didn't know any of that stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, no, we need that back. And I was just constantly, wherever I could put it in the comments into on anybody's stuff, I'd be like, who's got the grub truck video? And then, lo and behold, one day it comes back, and I just literally, I was on the ground just, like, praising the gods that that, that, that had come back. I mean, because that right there, and, and I hadn't even gotten, a, like, barely through it like a couple hours maybe I didn't even watch the full thing well that's when I sat down literally watched it from front to back because I was afraid it was going to disappear again still didn't know about screen recordings at that point okay I'm going to go collect myself and I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the actual video that I intended on doing in the first place <laughs> oh lord so um, this is how it happens, and this is me, and this is how you get me, and it's not going to change. It's who I am, and and that's why I'm so passionate about this case. Okay. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and uh, I will be uh, trying to get to comments. I just really got to get some few more things off my phone. But I know I got to get to them faster than I am because I know they're disappearing. So people with comments that are lengthy, that are long, that they anybody who's had comments disappear that wants to comment and it's disappearing, please 
copy and paste your comment into like a memo on your phone and save it there. Put in, put on it what video you had it in, where it was, and keep posting it. Keep posting it, please. Because obviously what you're saying is important. And I'm not getting to them fast enough. I'm trying. But there's so much. There's so much. And there's so many good comments. There's so much good information in there. And I really do apologize for not getting to them. I, I mean, now what I'm doing, and... And of course, it's causing it even to be lengthier, but it's good I'm doing this. I think it's a good thing. Is when there's a comment in there that is like unusual, that I haven't seen before, that makes sense, or it's something I haven't heard, I will click on their, um, their picture, on their username, which brings up a window which shows me other comments that they've made elsewhere on my channels. And oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so sorry, but there's some of these comments that are back in some of the videos that I've never even seen the comments in. So... I apologize for that, but I, I'm getting to you. I'm getting to you. A little slowly but surely, I'm getting there. I mean, I'd have to be up morning, noon, and night 24-7 in order to do this. And I'd have to have another one of me beside me doing it, too. And maybe even another one. It's that. Yeah, there's that much. So please, bear with me. I'm getting there. Um, I think getting to the comments quickly right after a video is a good thing. I'm trying to do that. I know I haven't done these last few videos. Again, I apologize. So I'm going to apologize and say thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. You have a great day. I'll be back on here real soon.